All right, so today we did some enrichment problems here on campus on nuclear chemistry. And if you're watching this online, you can just pause the recording, try this for yourself, and then hit resume when you're ready. Or you can go to the course website and download the file named Nuclear Chemistry Enrichment. So here are problems one through four. Pause it, try for yourself, and resume when you're ready. There are problems five and six. Again, resume the recording when you're ready to see the answers. So now what we're going to do here on campus is we're going to go over each of these, make sure everybody understands how to do it. And that way we're all good at our nuclear chem calculations and decay equations. So let's do number one, write a balanced reaction for the processes that occur when polonium-210 undergoes each of these. Okay, so for the first thing you need to know is you've got to be able to know your particles, right? That's something you have to commit to memory. So electron capture involves what as a reactant? This is the only one that involves a reactant. Everything else produces some sort of particle as a product, right? But this involves or capture. What is being captured? An electron, right? Zero, negative one, E is being as a reactant. Do we agree? What's being produced as a product here? An alpha particle, which is the same thing as a, you could write it like this, or a helium atom, right? An alpha particle and a helium atom are the same thing. Gamma emission. This is the one that does not change the identity, right? All the other ones that change the identity. Gamma particle, what does that look like? It's zero, zero, right? Zero, zero, zero mass, and it's just a gamma as product. What is beta decay? Right, zero, negative one, and a, that's called a beta particle. And then positron emission, what's that? Zero, positive one, right. These two are opposites of each other. And then what do we have to remember? We have to obey the law of conservation of mass, right? So all our mass numbers on both sides need to equal each other and our atomic numbers need to equal each other. So you're gonna need to have a periodic table handy so you can look back up, a, up an atom or down an atom, right, to see which element we're dealing with. So for polonium-210, A, so it's mass numbers, oops, right, that's right, mass number. 210, the atomic number of polonium is 84. And this is electron capture, so that means that this is a reactant, zero, negative one, E. So if the bottom number on the left adds up to what? What number does the bottom number add up to? 83, right? Because 84 minus one is 83, so what number needs to be here as the atomic number? 83, right? And 210 plus zero is 210. And then how do I know what element that is? You just look up element number 83, which is bismuth. Do we agree on A? Okay, for B, this is alpha decay. So we're beginning with the same isotope. So this is still polonium-210. But now, this is a product. So 4, 2, and again, you can write it as alpha, or you can write it as 4, 2, H, E. It's the same thing. All right, what is my new top number? 206, right? Why? Because this needs to add up to this, right? 206 plus 4 is 210. And what's my new atomic number? 82, right? Because 82 plus 2 gives me 84. And what's element number 82? You just look it up. Uh, that's lead. 
Do we agree on B? Any questions on B? All right, C. Gamma emission, so zero, zero. All right, so this is just 210.84 PO going to zero, zero plus 210.84 PO. And you better run, run fast, right? You don't want to be around gamma radiation. All right, D is beta decay. So 210.84 polonium is what we're beginning with. We're producing a beta particle as a product, so that's zero, negative one, B, or beta. So what happens to my mass number? I mean, my atomic, my mass number stays the same, right? It's 210. What happens to my atomic number? It needs to what? Go up by one, right? Because it needs to be 84, 85 minus one, so that it equals 84. So element number 85 is acetine. That's a five. All right, because 85 minus one gives me 84. And then for E, positron emission, there's my 210, 84 polonium. I'm now producing a positron, so zero plus one beta. My mass number stays the same, right, because there's a zero. What happens to my atomic number? Does it go up or go down? It goes down, right, 83. So that's still uh, bismuth. All right, so the same isotope is produced here, right? You can, you can get bismuth by either electron capture or by positron emission. Any questions on number one? Yeah. Is it okay if I get the product side of your second? You put this first and yeah. this second? Yeah, that's fine. One plus two or two plus one. So fine. Same thing. Yep. Any other questions on number one? So this part you got to commit to memory, right? You just got to remember your particles in order to be able to do this. All right, let's look at number two, getting into some calculations. Which order, zero order, first order, second order, what order are the, is the kinetics for all of these reactions, these decay reactions, all follow which order kinetics? Zero, one, or two order. Nuclear decay follows first order kinetics, right? So we're gonna use all our first order integrated rate laws which are on your exam reference page, right? So we're using first order kinetics for all of these, every single one of them. A radioisotope is found to have a half-life of 88.9 hours. So that's T one half. And you begin with a one gram sample, so that's the initial mass. And you wanna know what percent remains after three weeks. So the time elapsed, 3.00 weeks, and you wanna know percent remains. Now key is remains, right? First thing we have to do before we can do any sort of kinetic calculations is what? You're almost always gonna do this first. Well, you don't need to worry about Converting to milligrams, you can leave that in grams. You can convert it to milligrams if you want, but it's not going to affect your calculation. Do we have the right constant? Did I give you the right constant? No, right? Don't have that. You're always going to need the right constant, unless that's what you're solving for. So solve for the right constant. And if we follow our handout, right? Our reference page gives us this equation. What's the relation? How do I get K? From half-life, right? T one half is equal to what over what? Natural log of two over K, right? So that means 88.9 is equal to natural log of two over K. Therefore, K, I got to be 
7.797 times 10 to the negative third. That's a three. And this, if half-life is in hours, K would be in hours inverse. Right? Because if this came from this, hours inverse would be my unit. Does everyone see why we need K? We have to plug it into our integrated rate law for first order reaction. Okay, now we need to make our units match, right? Because this is in hours and this is in weeks. So you can either convert 88.9 hours into weeks or you can convert three weeks into hours. Makes no difference to me. I'm gonna convert three weeks into hours, okay? So 3.00 weeks times there are seven days in one week and there are 24 hours in one day. So I got 504 hours. Okay, now we want to solve for N. when t is equal to 504. Because remember, this is the initial mass, this is the mass at some point in the future. And there are two versions of the first order integrated rate law, I don't care which one you pick. This is the slope intercept version. So if you say natural log of n is equal to negative kt, plus natural log of n sub zero. You could also do the other version, where you've got one over the other. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer either way. All right, so natural log of n is equal to k we just got. So 7.797 times 10 to the negative third. This is in hours inverse, times 504 hours. So hours cancel plus natural log of the initial, it's one. Natural log of one is what? Zero, right, natural log of one is zero. So ln of n is equal to this times this, so that gives me negative 3.9297. We'll carry out extra decimal places and round to the n. So how do I get rid of a natural log? E, both sides, right? N would be E to the negative 3.9297, which I got 0 0.0196 grams. So this is how much I began with, one gram. After 504 hours, this is how much I have left. I wanna know what percent remains. So how would I get that? That's an easy calculation. How would I get percent remaining? It would just be what? The amount you have at time in the future divided by over how much you began with, right? Times 100. So 0 0.0196 divided by one, times 100, so that's just 1.96% remaining. You've lost a lot of it. Does that make sense? If every 89 hours you're losing half of it, and you go 21 days, right? you would expect there not to be a whole lot of it left over. That makes sense? Make sense? Any questions on number two? Does everyone see how we did number two? Questions on two. All right. Let's look at number three, which is a cakewalk compared to number two. You don't even need to think that much on number three. There's no calculation to do. We're just solving for x, right? We're obeying the law of conservation of mass. I'm gonna write that so it's bigger. 239.94 
plutonium, 239.95 americium plus X. Okay, so what happened to the mass number? Did it change? No. What happened to the atomic number? It went up. For these two to equal each other, what must the atomic number be here? Negative one. And when it's a part a product, that would be B, a beta particle, right? We could also say that this underwent beta decay. That's all you gotta do there. Any questions on three? That one's pretty easy. We like those, right? Who doesn't like doing an easy problem? Let's look at number four. An isotope has a half-life of 23 hours and 18 minutes. So we've got two units to deal with there. We're gonna need to convert them so that we can add eventually. How long will it take for a 2.5 milligram sample to decrease by 15%? So we don't wanna go a full half-life. We only wanna go down 15%. All right, so our half-life is 23 hours, 18 minutes. Well, let's make that the same unit. Let's just make that the same unit, okay? So I say 23 hours times 60 minutes per hour. So that gives me 1,380 minutes. And now let's add 18 to it. So that gives me 1,398 minutes. Do you see why we wanted to get rid of having hours and minutes, right? Because you, you can't have both units in the calculation. It's going to make your answer nonsense. And the initial mass is 2.50 milligrams. And we want to know what time required to decrease by 15%. That's what we're solving for. Okay, so the first thing we need, we're going to be plugging into the first order integrated rate law. We've got an initial mass. We need to know the mass after this time has gone by, right? Well, we, are, we, we know that we're going to decrease it by 15%, right? So first thing we want to do is find the new N. So 15% is what as a decimal? Zero point what? One five. So therefore in, well excuse me, 15% of what was the mass? 2.5 would be 0 0.15 times 2.50, so that would be 0 0.375 milligrams gone, right? We've lost 0.375 milligrams because we're decreasing by 15%. That means I've lost 15%, right? So therefore, N is just the initial mass minus this 0.375. So zero, 2.50 minus 0 0.375 gives me 2.125 milligrams. Does everyone see how we get the mass? Because the problem asks, how long does it take me to decrease by 15%? So I just find 15% of the initial, subtract it out. That's how much I've lost. Does this make sense? All right, now we've still got to find K, right? You can't do this without K. Got to find the rate constant. So find K. 
Again, this is first order integrated rate law. So half life is equal to the natural log of two over K. So therefore, we plug in our half life. K is natural log of two over, what's our half life? 1398, and that's minutes. So that comes out to be 4.96 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that would be minutes inverse, right? Because one over minutes is minutes inverse. And now all I've got to do is solve for t using my integrated root law, right? Now I'm done. Using my integrated rate law. Again, you can use either version. So this time I'm going to use the second version. Natural log of n sub 0 over n is equal to kt. Right? You can use the version that's in slope-intercept form, or you can use this version. You'll get the same answer either way. So natural log of 2.50 over 2.125 is equal to 4.96 times 10 to the negative 4, and that's in minutes inverse. So that means time is going to be in minutes as well. So I got T equals, we're keeping two sig figs, right? So T is equal to 327.25, which would be 330 minutes. So have we made it a full half-life yet? No, we're only decreasing it by 15%, so it makes sense that our time is not near the half-life. Right? Half-life's 23 hours, we got 330 minutes. That's not 23 hours. Does this make sense? Questions on number four. If you made a mistake on four, do you see where you made it? All right, yay for kinetics. Here's number five. You're studying the kinetics of a radio, of the radioactive decay of an isotope, and you observe that it takes 95.3 minutes for 20% of the sample to decay. So let's list our information. The time required is 95.3, that's five minutes. And it takes, the word, we're saying 20% of a sample. Now I don't tell you the mass of the sample. So if I don't tell you the mass of the sample, what did I tell you on Monday to assume your initial mass is? 100, right? Because if I don't give you the initial mass, you can just make life easy on yourself. Just pick a 100 gram sample, right? And it's 20% decayed, so what does that make my mass at some point in the future? If it's 20% decayed, how many grams have I lost? 20 grams, right? So it would be 80. 20% decayed equals 20 grams lost, right? Make sense? Because if I said the sample was 1.3 grams, you would multiply 20% and then subtract it from that. But since I just said a sample, pick yourself a number that's easy to work with. So that's why I say, when you don't get an initial mass, just pick a, ma a mass that's easy to work with. And you can pick any mass you want, because it just says A sample. Based on this information, what is the half-life? Okay, so this is easy, right? Because there's an easy way to get half-life. What do I have to solve for to get half-life? Solve for k, right? And then I can turn the rate constant into a half-life. So we're gonna solve for k. Okay. 
Okay. Now you can use either version. You can use the slope intercept version, linear, or you can use the fraction version, whichever makes you happy. Ln n sub zero over n is equal to k t is the version I used. You could have used the other version. You'll get the same answer regardless. So natural log of 100 over 80 is equal to k times 95.3 minutes. So I got k equals 2.34 times 10 to the negative third. If this is in minutes, k will be in minutes inverse. Do we agree on how we got k and the value we got? Now, if I know k, is it difficult to get half-life? No, that's an easy calculation, right? So now we can solve for half-life. Half-life is just the natural log of 2 over k. So that's natural log of 2 divided by what I just got, 2.34 times 10 to the negative third minutes inverse. Minutes over minutes inverse gives me a time in minutes. So I got 296 minutes. Three sig figs. Do we agree on this one? Any questions on number five? Going once, going twice. All right. Last problem, number six. May have required a little bit more thinking, but I'm sure you got it. Brachium. All right, if, if there was ever going to be a, an element named after me, it would definitely be something radioactive, right? Of course, it could be named after someone else named Brock. Like, I guess I can't assume that it'd be named after me. All right, kinetic nuclear studies of Bruckham reveal that the ice tilt is safe to be around when its mass is 0.025% of the initial mass. So just interpret that question carefully. If the mass of a 0.5 milligram sample takes two years to drop to 0.049 milligrams, how many years will it take for this sample to be safe to be around? How long is it going to take before this is a safe ice tilt to be in the same room and not worry about your health? So let's list our information. I think it helps if you list out your information. Keeps you organized. The initial mass is 0 0.50 milligrams. The mass at some point in the future is 0 0.049 milligrams. And how much time has elapsed? Two years. So obviously, there's an important piece of the puzzle missing. What is it? This should be your first step, kind of as a gut instinct. What do we need to solve for first? K, All right, gotta solve for K. So let's solve for the right constant. So here, though, we're not gonna use half-life. Why? Do we have half-life? Do we know half-life? No, but we do have all the information that we can use to get K another way, right? If you use this information and plug it into the first order integrated rate law, natural log of N is equal to negative KT plus natural log of N sub zero, right? So this is using the slope intercept version, right? I don't know half life. So let's find another way to get K. This is all the information I need to solve for K. Because I've got time, I've got n, and I've got initial mass. So natural log of n is equal to negative kt plus natural log of the initial mass. Natural log of 0 0.049 is equal to negative kt is 2.0 plus natural log of 0.5. Do some rearranging. I got K to be 1.162. If this is in years, K would be in years inverse. 
Does everyone see why we couldn't use Half-Life to get K? And give you Half-Life, right? You can't solve for Half-Life, and you can't use Half-Life if it's not given to you. But I've got enough information to get it. This method. Now, the problem says it's safe to be around when its mass currently is 20.025% of the initial. In other words, this is saying it hasn't lost 0.025%. But that it is 0.025 percent. Okay, so what does that mean? Your new n would be 0.025 percent. All right, so that's 0.025 percent, which is 0.00025 times. 0.50. Now we're not subtracting it this time. This is the value we want it to actually be. Okay, so that's 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth in my unit here of milligrams. Make sure you understand why. Here we're not subtracting it out because in the previous problem we said decrease by 15%. So we took 15% and subtracted it out, right? But here, we're saying we want it to be that value. We want it to actually be that value. We don't want it to have lost that percentage. We want it to be that value. You see why we're not subtracting this one? We want it to go way down, way, 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 way down. So this is our n. So now we can solve the integrated rate law using this k, using this n, and using that initial mass and solve for t. So calculate t required to get n equals zero. Well, I'm not going to write out all those zeros. 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. So again, Natural law, we're going to use the integrated rate law twice. Right? Natural log of n is equal to negative kt plus natural log of the initial. So natural log of 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to negative, there's my k, 1.162. t is what I'm solving for plus natural log, there's my initial mass, 0 0.50. So I got T equals 7.1377. I can only keep two sig figs, so that would be 7.1 years. So you got to wait seven years and change before this would be safe to be around. Does everyone see why we use the integrated rate law twice in this problem? And does everyone see why there was no subtracting involved in this one? It's all on how the question's worded. Any questions on number six? Feeling good about this stuff? Ready to ace it on the final? All right, that's where we're gonna stop for today then.